about the online thing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he shared it. Amen, amen. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome to New Star Church. Welcome to all online campus. How are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Pastor Bernard. I'm one of the pastors here at New Star Church. So, before we get started, a couple of things. We have this, these invite cards. These are awesome. So, you can meet our guests, and you can invite other people to come to come to church. So, just make that connection with people, hand them a card, tell them you'd love to see them come to church. The other thing. We have a connect card. This is also available on newstartna.org. But 
These connect cards actually allow us to know who was here today. They have prayer requests on the back. Uh, we can pray with you. You can also fill out these cards online once again at newstartna.org. So there's that. So let's give Jesus another round of applause today. We start a new sermon series this week called I Am. We're going to dive into that in a little bit. So, but before uh, we get going, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we're so thankful to be here today. Father, I ask that you to be inside this house. As that no matter how many people are here, how many is watching online, that you work in these hearts. You work in these hearts. Uh, you allow us to hear the message. You allow us to hear you and feel you this evening, Father. We ask that you be in this house and be with these families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up and worship. Amen.
I'm excited to be back here. Yeah, it's been two weeks since we've been in the building. Last week we had some AC issues. It was like 85 degrees in here when I came in here. It was hot. <laughs> um, but we got everything fixed, and I'm excited to be back together with everybody. It's wonderful to be able to see everybody this evening. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Starting next week, July 31st, we're going to continue our I Am series, but we're going to start our growth track class. So that will take place immediately after service right here. And this is our uh, new member class. So if you would like to learn more information about that, please feel free to reach out to myself or Pastor Bernard or Pastor Aaron. And we'd love to get you hooked up, signed up with that. I think a lot of people in this room have been through it. There's some that have it. And so if you'd like to find out more information, please get in contact with one of us. Also, if you didn't get a piece of paper with the sermon notes on them today, we have those online for you as well. So if you would like a copy of them and you need some, Miss Pam and Bernie are right here if anybody in here needs a copy. Um, but if you'd like to go on newstartna.org, you can find the sermon notes right there. Um, what else do I got? You got me all kinds of stuff on here to talk about. Right? <laughs> um, we can't do this without you guys' support. And part of us worshiping is, is obviously singing like we've been doing. We sing songs of praise and worship to God. We worship God through hearing his message that we're going to hear in just a little while. And we also worship God with our finances because he tells us to bring the full tithe to the storehouse. So um, we have that right down here, down front. You can also go on newstartna.org and give. And you can also sign up on Tithely to give that way. And we appreciate anything that you do. Um, at this time, if, if you would, just bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, I just come to you tonight and I just thank you for the awesome time of praise and worship that we have here tonight and I pray that we would give you all the honor and glory that you deserve God because we know that without you we're worthless God that we have fallen short of your glory every day God and that without you we, we would continue to be lost God we just thank you for who you are I pray that your spirit move through this place tonight that you work on the hearts of your people and that you would lead us and guide us into living lives that are holy that we live lives that are declaring to the rest of the world your glory God that we stand as the city on a hill shining out to the world of you and declaring your glory God we just ask that you work through these lives tonight and that you allow us to receive your message and to use your message to go share your gospel that Jesus Christ has come for his people God we give you all the honor and glory that you deserve in Jesus name amen, amen. Um, if you would uh, this is time to get up, shake a hand, tell everybody you're happy to be here and happy to see them and all that good stuff. And if you'd like to come down and do your tithes, now it's time to do it. Thank you.
How we doing again tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Excited to be here? Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord again. So last week we were on our church retreat, so we were uh, hanging out at the Smoky Mountains for a week, and it was it was enjoyable. It was an enjoyable time to get away, to kind of take a break, kind of refresh my brain a little bit. Uh, constantly going all the time, so that was a, it was a nice nice time with some family. Um, really enjoyed it. So this week we are starting the series called I Am. I've been looking forward to this series for probably four months now. Um, this series is going through the different times uh, throughout the book of John that Jesus said I Am in different, different ways. So this is the one, uh, he says I Am seven different times inside the Bible. So let's see some pretext real quick. So we're talking about I Am the bread of life, okay? I am the bread of life. So before we turn there, we'll give you guys some pretext to where we're reading. Uh, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee preparing for the miracle. A great multitude followed him because they all seen his signs on what he did and, and what he did for miracles, what he did for diseases and such like that. Jesus had just fed 5,000 people. Um, that's at the beginning of John. But the crowd failed to see the significance of the miracle. Uh, the crowd failed to see truly what he did. Okay, and cared for truly just for the free lunch. They said, "Appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for feeding me." Um, that's it. Okay, Jesus offered to meet their deepest needs, but they cannot see beyond their bellies. So their bellies were full, and they didn't see past that. The miracle of five loaves and two fish to feed that many people. See, this is the first of a series of "I am," and in the Greek. It is ego emi in the Greek for I am. Uh, these sayings in the gospel just remind us of a burning bush story when Moses asked God his name and, G and he replied, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am sent me to you. We read in Exodus. The phrase I am become a, an associated with God's identity. Uh, I am, of course, that can simply be self-identification. Uh, but in John's gospel, it clearly means much more, the great I am. So let's all stand together to read God's word. Um, we are going to be in John 6, verse 35. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. You can read out of whichever version you carry. Um, and let's all say it together. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe me. All the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him 
may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. You may be seated. See, the crowd failed to, to truly understand when Jesus spoke of the bread of life. Okay? He, the, the bread of God that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So Jesus makes His meaning clear. He says, I am the bread of life. In verse 35. See, throughout the Bible, bread is a symbolic representation, right, of God's life-sustaining provision. Okay, when Jesus told the hungry crowds that He was the bread of life, He was teaching His followers that He alone was the true source of spiritual life. It says that I am alone the only source of spiritual life both in this present world and in the everlasting life to come. So when they go to heaven, right? When we see the term food, I like food. I'm going to be the first to tell you, when we talk about food, I get excited. We're talking about bread. I eat a lot of bread, okay? But it means the spiritual term of Jesus alone. That's truly what it means in the context. See, our Lord would have us know that He Himself is appointed food of a man's soul. He Himself is the food source of a man's spiritual soul. And why is that? Why is Jesus the only form of food for a spiritual soul? Well, it's, it's real easy. Our soul is weak in our notes. Our soul is weak. We can't withstand our spiritual self. We cannot control our spiritual self without Jesus. There's no way around it. 2 Peter 2, verse 14 says, Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls, they have a heart trained in coveted practices and are accursed children. Unstable souls souls because our soul is weak our soul is not strong without god without the spirit it is weak it is not strong james 1 21 says therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive the meekness and the implanted word which is able to save your souls you see it says save your souls Because your soul is not strong. Our human soul needs the atonement. We need the atonement of Jesus Christ. There's no way around it. The sacrifice, we need that. We need to sacrifice our human selves into our spiritual soul of Jesus. There's no way around it. Leviticus 17 verse 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that gives atonement of the soul. Which blood are we talking about? Which blood are we speaking about? The blood of Jesus Christ is the atonement for the soul. Our human soul needs purification. We truly need to be purified because our our hearts are so deceitful above everything. It's deceitful. It's nasty. It's dirty. Completely dirty. See, truly, when we talk about, we talk about the gospel and we talk about Jesus and who he was and and what he did and we talk about well he died for our sins and that is true he did but truly we don't deserve it we didn't deserve it we deserve to perish we deserve hell we don't deserve the sacrifice but he did it he did it because he loves us because he loves the world and we need him We need Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we're nothing in our lives. Anything glorious that comes on our day is nothing glorious. 
Anything glorious that comes in our day is God working on our lives. And He should be glorified. See, He states here in James, He states here in James, that we would go back and, and, and read it, of all the filthiness and, and overflow of wickedness. Filthy. Filthy folks. And we all are. But we thank God for what He did. See, we read here in John talking about the bread of life. Bread is a necessary food, right? It's necessary. When I see bread on the menu, I'm like, yeah, let's do that. I like some bread now. It's necessary in life. We can manage tolerable well without many things, but not without bread. Now, some people say, well, I'm a diet. I don't eat bread. That's true. Okay, I get you. I, I'll give you that. But bread is going to fill us up quicker than anything else. Am I right? When we eat bread, we get filled up. So when we talk about the bread of life, what kind of comparison do we use with that? If we truly get filled up on Jesus. He is the life. And He says here that He is the bread of life. But we need the bread every morning and every evening of our lives. We need Christ every single day. There's no way around it. It's with Christ every single day we need Him. And he deserves more than our praise and worship. I think what we do is wonderful here at New Star. We do praise and worship, and we get in the Word, and I think that's wonderful. We do it on Saturdays. But how often are we praising and worship Him in through it a week? How often do we sit there and we truly get into the Spirit and, and speak to Him? How often are we reading God's Word? How often does that happen? It does not happen. When we pray, how often do we do that throughout our schedules? How often are we truly taking our time to praise Him and to worship Him? He deserves more than truly what we give. And see, we, we ask, well, why throughout my schedule do I need to make time for that, right? Why throughout my schedule do I need to, to bring that into the equation? Well, it's real simple. It's real simple. It's the gospel message. He sent His Son to die for us even though we deserve to perish. We truly do. We did. We all deserve to perish. Jesus should fill you up more than, than, than what we deserve. He should fill you up more than you think. He's all you need. Nothing else. Jesus should be everything that you should crave in your life. Nothing else. He is truly alone just jesus christ he is your salvation and there's no way around it him alone is your salvation nothing that you have done can get you saved notice we see here in john that jesus states that you will not be hungry and you will not thirst those common different things that we deal with i'm thirsty right now those common different things that we deal with he says, you will not thirst. You will not be hungry. I will be the, fill you up more than you can ever imagine. Just me alone. He will feed our souls. He makes sure we are satisfied. He truly makes sure that we're okay. As long as we give Him the time. Give Him the effort needed. He will make sure... He will make us want more and more of Him. I don't know about you, uh, you know, different salvation stories. But you know that, uh, that early Christian, once you get saved, and, and, and you're on fire. You're on fire for Christ. You say, oh man, I'm going to listen to worship music all day. I'm going to praise Him all the time. We need more of that. We need a revival. We need that. We need more of that. I always say that's the, that's the early Christian, the baby Christian, when they get saved. You know, there, there it is. Well, we need that. We need to be on fire for Christ all the time. It's important that we be on fire for Him. See, James 4, verse 8 says, Draw near to God, He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
We read there in, John, in James. So I've got a couple of questions for everybody. Are you hungry spiritually? Spiritually, are you hungry? Are you wanting to earn just the, the, the urge of getting more and more of Him? To feel Him inside of you? Are you ready for that? Like it's important as Christians that we need to be that way. Or, or, do you feel empty? Do, like has anybody ever been so hungry that you drink water and it goes down and you're like, oh man, I felt that go completely down. Because your stomach is empty. Right? Your stomach's empty. That's how we are as Christians. We're empty. Because we don't fill up on the bread of Christ. Because we don't fill up on Him. We don't fill up. We sit there and we, and we just, 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 life just drags you down. Life tears you apart. It makes you empty. Well, it, it, the Scripture says there's one way to fill you up. That's through Jesus. Well, you've got to ask yourselves, do you feel empty? Are you hungry? You've got to be hungry for, for Christ. You've got to be on fire for God. You've got to be able to be filled up. Stop starving yourselves. Get hungry. Fill up. We should be filling up on Jesus every day. With different habits. With our habits. In our notes. We should be filling up with Him with our habits. The things we do should be glorifying Him. When we go to work, that, oh, that 9 to 5, here we go, man. Here it is, 8.30, 5.30. Feeling it. We should be fired up for Christ. You know, we sit there and we complain about our work life. We sit there and complain about our everyday dealings with people. You're put in that for a reason so that you can spread the gospel. Because you never know there's a person you can touch in your life. That's how we heard it. Why can't they hear it? That's what we're supposed to do. Should we be filling up on Jesus with our habits? Filling Him up with our thoughts? The way we think? Sometimes the spirit battles, right? The spirit's going to battle from the, the evil things inside your head. But if we're filling up, our thoughts will be pure. Allow God to work in our thoughts. Allow Him to work in our emotions. We all fall short of our emotions. I do. Be the first to admit it. You know, it's just a lot of times you put a pastor on a pedestal, it's totally wrong. Normal person with normal emotions. In the trenches, the same way we all are. But we've got to deal with our emotions. We should be filling up on Jesus with our habits, our thoughts, our emotions, our schedules. Our schedules. You know what the, what the biggest excuse is to do something in life? I just don't have time. You know, I'm so busy. My schedule is so busy that I can't figure it out. I can't put it inside my schedule. We make our schedules. What do you mean you don't have time? We make, we make the time. We put together our schedules, our work schedules. We put together different things around our schedules. We should be filling them up with our schedule. Jesus should be inside of our schedule. Time with Him, reading God's Word, should be in our schedule. Praying should be in our schedule. Last and not least of our, with our points, I guess, actions. Our actions. Jesus should be filled up in our actions. How we interact with others should be Jesus-like. How we talk with others should be Jesus-like. He should be glorified in everything that we do. And see, we see back in Scripture, we see when Jesus says that all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out that we read in John. Hear this. He's not going to cast out His people. 
His people will not be casted out. Once we hear the word of God and we come closer to the Father, He changes our heart from a heart of stone. He changes it. And there's nothing that we can do about it because we're incapable. There's nothing we can do once God works in our heart because we are incapable of doing so. Because faith comes by hearing. We read in Romans 10 verse 17, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In Romans. He says that He will not cast us out. That that's love and compassion. You know, when he says, I will not cast you out, that's love and compassion that we don't deserve. We don't deserve those different attributes. Just as God chose Israel, when we talk about, about choosing how God chooses his people, just as God chose Israel out of love and not because of out of something impressive that they showed, he chose them. He chose them to work in their lives. And the reason why God chooses His people, God chooses us out of love. He does. He truly chooses us out of love. There's no other attribute that He can choose us out of. Because we're not worthy for it. Why would He do it? Because we're not even worthy. He chooses us because He loves us. And we cannot choose Him. We in our own flesh cannot choose God. We are incapable of choosing Him. Because we are filthy. How can we choose something glorious? We can't. We are incapable. We don't have any means by truly doing it. Our hearts can't truly make the choice. That's why God chooses us. Then you ask, well, well, why choose us then? If we're nasty why, and we're incapable, why, why should He do it to begin with? Well, because He is merciful. He shows mercy. First point, merciful. He shows mercy when we don't deserve. He shows it. Then he is gracious. He shows his grace on his people. So we see two different characteristics of mercy and gracious that God shows. We see it all throughout the Bible. See, we read in Jeremiah, we talk about choosing, when we talk about God choosing his people, right? And, and it all ties into the bread of life in John. Just, just, just hang tight here. We read in Jeremiah that he is the potter. And the people of Israel are the clay. And that he can destroy who he wants to because he's the potter. Okay? We read that. So when we talk about a potter, right? And we talk about clay, what do we think of? We may see it in the movies, right? With the hands. He's there building this thing, you know, kind of kind of looks like a clay item, right? Half the time I don't even know what they're making. But we see that, right? The potter is making a pot. He is in control of how he shapes that pot, right? And we see that. He is in control, and he can shape it however he pleases. He can do what he wants. He's in ultimate control over that pot. So we're going to read here in Jeremiah 18, verses 4 through 8. It says, And the vessel that he made out of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. As it seemed good to the potter to make, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do this with you as the potter, says the Lord? Look as the clay is the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up, to pull out, and destroy if that the nation against whom I have spoken turns from evil, and I will relent the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. So we talk about a vessel. We talk about of clay, right? We hope for His mercy. 
We truly do. We hope to have His mercy because we don't deserve it. So we hope for mercy and His grace that we truly don't deserve. We don't deserve His grace. We don't, we don't deserve it at all. See, we, uh, we read about speaking positivity into our lives, right? How many of us, we've talked about it, see, uh, speak, speak it into our lives and it'll happen. As, as long as I name it and claim it, it'll come. Speak it and, and, and it'll happen. Promise it'll happen. That's not how the Scripture states. The only positive thing in our life, in your life and in my life, is Jesus. There's no other positivity. That's it. That's the only positive thing. Because nothing holy comes out of us. Nothing holy truly comes out of us. There is only one holy, holy, holy when we talk about it inside Scripture. Revelations 4.8 says this, The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is yet and is to come. See, everyone, when we read back into, the, into John, it says, Everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Life away from this world, right? So he's talking about everlasting life. He's not talking about life of this world. He's talking about life in that world. Everlasting life with the Father. And see, when we talk about everlasting life, what do, we, what do we hear? So we hear life, we hear everlasting. Everlasting lasts forever, right? It's not temporary. It's not a temporary season. Everlasting life is forever. That's what it is. So no matter the situations you're going through, no matter how hungry you are, if you fill up on Jesus and, and His bread of life, you will fill up again. He refuses to His people to keep Him hungry. He refuses it. And the only way you can truly, truly retrieve everlasting life when we speak about it, there's, there's only truly one way. And that's the blood of Christ. Having the blood of Christ. That's the only way. And see, when we talk about the sacrifice, when we think about it, it was just wasn't a singular event, was it? It wasn't just a, yeah, it just happened, right? So during that time, Romans, they, they hung anybody that spoke negative to them. They put them all, half of them, upside down crosses. Hung them for what they said, what they did. It was a way of punishment. So it's not uncommon to see the sacrifice of Jesus Christ during that time. But you know, but you know that wasn't common at all. The burial and the resurrection. No other man did that that was hung on a cross. That's what makes that event significant more than any other, other event. The sacrifice changed the world. It did. The sacrifice changed the world. Truly for Christians. It gave us as a, as, uh, as a house full of sinners, as hope. Hope what we can cling on to every single day. When we're totally depraved. It gives us hope. Hope in a Savior... Hope in a dawning. Hope in Him. Hope in Jesus Christ, the great I Am. So, question for you. Question for everybody watching on Facebook land. 
Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you so spiritually starved that you don't know truly what to do? I ask that. And it's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. And you know what? We deal with people in the world every day that are starving, that are sitting there with don't have any hope of life. And we let them walk by. They're starving spiritually. They're thirsty. But we continue to do it. When we were put on a great commission to spread the word to all ends of the world. It's up to us. We're supposed to be different. If that sacrifice truly mattered and we get filled up on the bread of life every single day, then we need to do our part. Russell, can I get you to come up for a second? We need to truly examine ourselves. So we talk about the bread of life. We, he stated to thousands of people, He said, I am the bread of life. Through me you will not be thirsty. Through me you will not be hungry. And yet, we, we worry about ourselves. We sit there and, and worry about taking care of ourselves. He's the only one that can give us the hunger. That can save us from the hunger. That can save us from being thirsty. How often are you drinking from Him? How often are you filling up with Him from His Word? How often are you showing His compassion and His love and His mercy towards others? It's up to us to come together. I don't care if there's 15 people in this house. I don't care if there's 100 people in this house. The same word will be spoken every single week and we will make a difference. Everybody watching online, sitting in these pews, we need to get filled up. We need to get the hunger taken away. We're starving for Jesus. Churches are dying because they're starving for Him. People are losing loved ones because they're starving for Him. We need to make a difference. Pastors of the CSRA, I hope you're watching. We need to make a change inside church. We need to make a change in our families. We're dying because we don't allow Jesus into our hearts. Let's pray. Father God, we come to You tonight. We come to You starving. We come to You with an aching heart. We come to You with no direction. But we know that through You, You will give us the bread we need. That, we'll, that You'll give us the life that we need. We're so thirsty. We're so thirsty. But we need You into our lives. Into our churches, we need You. So many churches... Our, our people are sitting in pews that don't know you. Work in these people's lives. We are begging for you, Father. Be in these churches. Be in these homes. We need you now more than ever. The world is so lost and so different. And it's not the way you intended it to be. Come for your people. Work in these families. Work inside this church. Preaching your word every single week. Father, I ask that you guide our leaders. Guide our authorities. 
to get closer to you. Father, we come to you on our knees. We come to you just lost, and we need you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Absolutely. Father, thank you so much for bringing us together this evening to hear your word and hear this important message about you being the bread of life. Heavenly Father, we are hungry, we are starving. Every single one of us. We need you, Lord, every day, every moment. We need you every hour. Heavenly Father, I pray that your spirit is with us as it always is. But Lord, we pray that 
you are with us and that you are always guiding us, that you are always prompting us through your word and through your spirit to do your will and to exercise within your kingdom your right to rule and reign over all your kids, that we work for you, that we, as we carry until you come, that we carry not just walking around and just living our lives, but that we walk around. Father, I pray that you take this message and you transform us, both us who are here in person and those that are watching through the internet. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless us all. For those who couldn't be here because they were sick or otherwise engaged, Lord, I pray that you lay your hand upon them, that they may be healed, and that they may have things sorted out so they can come here at the next appointed time. Heavenly Father, we pray that no matter what it is that we want, no matter what it is that we seek for, no matter what it is that we desire, Heavenly Father, if it is not your will, we pray that you change our will. But in all things, Lord, we pray that your will is done, not ours, on this earth as it is done in heaven. Receive glory unto yourself this season and throughout this week. We pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our risen sovereign. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, y'all may be dismissed. Have a great week.